Chapter 9. Inside their dorm room, the four space cadets were tending to their noses. And he had managed to reattach his with the help of some crazy glue. The other three were dabbing at theirs with cold compresses, waiting for the bleeding to stop. A short while later, Rip put down his after-dinner ham sandwich and picked up a letter he had just received by Rocket Mail. It's from my kid brother. Rip said proudly, Listen to this. Struggling to make out the handwriting, he proceeded to read the letter to his three buddies. Dear Rip, how are things at the Space Academy? I hope you are fine. Things are pretty good here at home. Mom gave up worming and is making a pretty good living selling cups of dirt. You'd be surprised at the demand for dirt cups. We keep having to go out and buy more cups so Mom can fill them. Dad is still clucking like a chicken, but we're kind of getting used to it. It's when he bends down and pecks around on the gravel drive that it's a little hard to take. Mom says if she sells 200 more dirt cups, we'll be able to take Dad to a real doctor. And not just Mr. Barnes who thinks he's a doctor, but is really a barber who isn't allowed to handle sharp instruments. I'm going back to school as soon as my suspension is over. And this time I'm going to do as good as you did, Rip. Which means it should only take me seven or eight years to graduate high school. If I only flunk each grade once. We're all real proud of you, big brother. Thanks for sending the real official space suit that you stole from the Academy warehouse. It fits dad really well and makes him look really nice when he's out back pecking around in the gravel. Mom is real proud of you too, Rip. She's gonna send you a cup of dirt when she gets the chance. Good luck on your exams, bro. We all can't wait to see what you can steal for us when you're a real space patrolman. Love, Flathead. Isn't that a sweet letter? Rip asked genuinely touched. Let me see that, Hunk said, grabbing the letter from Rip's hand. Hunk stared at the letter for a few seconds. Hey, how'd your brother get the name Flathead? He asked. It's an old family name. Rip replied. I love the letters from your brother. And he said, they make me feel homesick. Really? Rip asked, where's your home? An electronics factory on Mercury. Andy replied, my nose hurts, Shaky said. That beef hardy is a horrible bully. Forget about him, Hunk said, admiring his profile in a hand mirror. Once the swelling went down, his face would be as fabulous as ever he determined. We can't worry about him now. We gotta study, guys. We all really want to be in the space patrol, right? Right? The others agreed. My brother is counting on me. Rip said, A lot of people are counting on us. If we work together, we'll make it Hunk said with real emotion. The four comrades put their arms around each other's shoulders and hugged each other. Unfortunately, Rip hugged with a little too much enthusiasm and Andy's nose popped off again. No problem. Andy said, Start studying without me. I'll have the nasal unit back on in a jiffy. But without his nose... No one could understand a word he said. While this touching conversation was taking place inside the dorm room, Cadets Beef Hardy and Cammie Cheesewell were searching the halls, looking for that very room. 
I think that's their door. The one that says men on it. Beef said, Isn't that the men's restroom? Kimmy asked, No. I think they painted the word on the door. You know, just to be cute. At that moment, Debbie Dork. Carrying a pile of textbooks instead of her usual camcorder. Came around the corner. Hiya. Uh, she said absently. Debbie. Beef cried. Can I carry those for you? No, thanks. I'm already carrying them. Debbie said coldly. Cammie nudged Beef hard in the ribs. We have a mission. Remember? She whispered. Beef's normally emotionless face reddened. But Debbie, you wouldn't happen to know where Hunk's room is, would you? He asked, trying to sound casual. Debbie stopped. She seemed to think for a minute. Yes. She said, finally. It's on the 20th floor. Room 2034. Thanks a lot. Beef said with more enthusiasm than was called for. Perhaps later you and I could meet and discuss room numbers. I know some really interesting ones. Maybe, but Debbie had turned the corner and disappeared. A few minutes later, Beef and Cammie were standing outside room 2034, having a whispered planning conversation. Why does it smell of bologna in there? Cammie whispered, sniffing the air. They buy these spray cans of artificial bologna fragrance and they spray the smell in. Beef told her. They like it, I guess. She crinkled her stubby nose and made a disgusted face. Cools. Yes. Anyone whose room smells like artificial bologna doesn't belong in the Interplanetary Space Patrol. Beef said. He felt like saluting, but restrained himself. I agree. Cammie said, giving him an admiring look. So here is my plan for tomorrow's exam. Your plan? Beef was a little taken aback. I thought I was in charge. Oh, okay. Cammie's face filled with disappointment. What's your plan? I don't have a plan. Beef admitted. Why don't we try your plan? Cammie's creamy white face brightened again. Okay. Good idea. I call my plan plan number 114. No. Call it Z-12. Beef whispered. You're so good at this. She said meaning it as a sincere compliment. Thank you. Beef said stiffly. She's a smart girl, he thought. A very smart girl. So let's hear plan Z-12. Well, we make a lot of funny noises. Cammy said. She studied his face to see if he liked the idea. His handsome, rugged featured face showed only bewilderment. Funny noises? That's plan Z-12. She nodded her head yes. How long do we make the funny noises? Beef asked, rubbing his perfect chin thoughtfully, studying his own reflection in her green eyes. All night, Cammie answered. She realized she felt terribly nervous. Maybe, maybe, she thought, if he really likes my plan, he like me too. We make funny noises all night. Beef repeated, still confused. That's plan Z-12? Yes. That's my plan. Cammie said, giving him a confident smile. 
You thought about it. I like it. You said finally. You do? Really? She cried. He muffled her mouth with his hand. They were standing right outside the space cadet's door after all. I think it shows a lot of promise. Beef said. I do have a few very minor questions, however. Oh. Really? Kimmy asked. Like what? Well, like why do we make funny noises all night? The question seemed to catch her by surprise. She leaned her back against the corridor wall and closed her eyes. Because they'll be studying all night for the Colonial Space Settlement exam. Right? Right? Beef said. But if we make funny noises outside their door and outside their window, they'll be distracted. They'll wonder what the noises are. And they won't be able to study. See? Beef nodded thoughtfully. They'll spend the whole night trying to track down the funny noises. And they won't get any studying done. And then in the morning, they'll all flunk the test. Brilliant! Beef cried. Absolutely brilliant! Cammy muffled his mouth with her hand. Oomph, oomph, oomph. He said. She took her hand away. What did you say? Absolutely brilliant. She could feel herself blushing. She was so happy. She felt like throwing her arms around his perfectly pressed uniform. What kind of funny noises? He asked, interrupting her thoughts. You know, she said, I do. Yeah, just funny noises. You mean like this? Beef asked. He removed his uniform jacket, unbuttoned his uniform shirt, put his hand in his armpit, and cranked his arm making several loud PFT sounds. Just as he did this, Two cadets came walking past. Hardy sure knows how to impress a girl. One said to the other. They burst out laughing as they turned a corner. What's their problem? Beef asked. His hand still in his armpit. They're just jealous. Cammy said, smiling at him tenderly. But that isn't the kind of funny sound I meant. Beef looked disappointed. He removed his hand, resisted the temptation to smell his fingers, and stared to button up his shirt. I meant like animal sounds, Cammy explained. Like this. She started to hoot like an owl. Hoo hoo. Hoo hoo. Oh. That's good. That's good. Beef said enthusiastically. That's a cat, right? Here. Let me try one. He scrunched up his handsome face and began cheeping like a bird. Cheep, cheep. Cheep, cheep. Just as he was really getting into it. The same two cadets came walking past again. This time heading the other way. Hardy really knows how to show a girl a good time. One of them said, and they broke up in hysterics again. That was very good, Cammy said. How about this one? Beef cried. He began mooing like a cow. That's awesome. Cammy said, truly impressed. Well, it's a familiar sound. My family used to own a herd of cows. Beef said modestly. You had a dairy farm? Dairy farm? What do you mean? Beef asked, bewildered. You know, the herd of cows. Did you own them for their milk? Kimmy asked. 
Milk? You can get milk from cows? Beef looked positively astonished. No one told us? He said, slapping his forehead. No wonder mom and dad couldn't make a living. We kept the cows for their fur. Let's get back to plan Z-12. Cammie suggested. There's a walkway right outside the Space Cadet's dorm window. One of us can get out on the walkway and make funny noises out there. And one of us can stay here by the door and make funny noises. Brilliant! Beef Hardy said again. He stifled another urge to salute. That'll really confuse them. Yes. That's the idea. Cammy said. When they look out the window, we'll just duck around the corner. When they open the door, we can hide behind that storage crate over there. She said, pointing to it. That way we can keep them guessing all night. They won't have a second to study. It's perfect, Beef said enthusiastically. Why don't you take the walkway outside the window? And I'll take the door? Cammie suggested glancing at her watch. Beef thought it over. No. He said, shaking his head. Why don't you take the door? And I'll take the walkway? Okay. Cammie agreed. If you like that better. No. I changed my mind. You had it right the first time. Beef said. I'll take the walkway and you take the door. Okay. Sounds good. Cammie agreed. Good luck. See you in the morning. Yes. Good luck. Beef said seriously shaking her hand. He started to walk away, but stopped and came back. I'm sorry. Let me get this straight. Do I take the walkway and you take the door? Or do you take the door and I take the walkway? I take the door and you take the walkway. Cammie said patiently. Unless you want it the other way around. No. No. That's fine. Beef said, thinking it over. He stepped closer to her. Cammy. He said softly. There's just one other thing I wanted to ask you. Yes? She whispered expectantly. Leaning close to him. He hesitated. Go on. She whispered. What is it, Beef? Which do you like better? My cow or my canary? It was cold out on the ledge. But Cadet Hardy didn't mind. He had a mission to perform. The strong gusting winds made him lean against the building for support. He was at least 20 stories up in the air. I don't mind dying while on duty. He told himself. But he really didn't want to die while mooing like a cow on a window ledge. He wanted to button his uniform jacket to the top. But that was against the dress code regulations which called for three buttons only, except for formal occasions or space wars. A light rain began to fall. A misty drizzle that turned into a steady cold downpour. Moo! He called at the dark window. The shades were drawn. He couldn't see inside. But he knew his mooing must be driving the four space cadets crazy. Keeping them from studying a word. He wondered how Cammie was doing at the doorway. He wondered if she was doing her cat sounds or her barking seal. He wondered how her throat was holding out. This is getting pretty sore. Maybe he should start cheeping like a canary for a while and save his throat. 
Then he could get back to mooing in the early morning hours when it really counted. He stifled a yawn and started to cheep. If only it weren't so cold and wet. Maybe he should go inside and ask Hammy to trade places with him for a while. No. An interplanetary space patrolman on a serious mission would never do that. He had a sudden impulse to salute. But he knew it would knock him off the ledge, so he stifled the urge. Cheap, cheap, cheap. He giggled. Thinking of the confusion, he must be causing on the other side of the window. He coughed. His throat was really sore. Maybe he'd better switch to a new animal. How about a pig? He thought. Excellent. Now how do pigs go? He couldn't remember. His parents had owned only cows. Cheap, cheap, cheap. He decided to stick with what he knew. The rain stopped, but the wind continued to roar. Commander Dork will be proud, B thought. And Debbie. Debbie would be proud of him, too. Someday. The hours dragged by. He clucked like a chicken for a while just for variety. This plan has to work, he thought. As a purple sun began to rise through the parting clouds. There's no way those four clowns are getting any studying done in there. Not with Cammy and me bombarding them with these sounds. He was soaked to the skin and his throat throbbed with pain. But he knew it would be worth it when these space cadets failed their written exam. The sun was a red globe now, rising higher into the morning sky. He glanced at his watch. Time to get changed and go in for breakfast. Hooray! He straightened up, took a deep breath and stretched. Glad the long night was over. Then he turned away from the window took two steps, and fell off the ledge.